For just the second time in this series, the Texans are playing in the AFC Championship as we take on the number one seed Pittsburgh Steelers. Welcome back everybody to the Texans franchise. It's the biggest game of the series again. Huge win last episode. That was such a fun game against the Raiders. I can't believe how well we ended up playing. I think that was the best game the offensive line has played. From a pass protection standpoint, we only ran for 33 yards and really didn't need to do anything on the ground with how good the passing game was. We picked up 20 first downs, we did a really good job on third down and not getting into bad third downs. Roseman was only sacked one time on 38 pass attempts, so like 39 dropbacks I would guess. No runs here for Roseman. We didn't do a great job against the running game. That's a concern going into this matchup against the Steelers. But with the way that Rosemond and this offense played, I know we have our chance to go all the way this season. Now let's take a look at the Steelers today as we face our last AFC opponent. The quarterback is Braden Jennings coming off a 30 touchdown, 10 pick season. He's in his 11th year. All of them in Pittsburgh. Running back Kevin Douglas really concerns me today. He's coming off a 1,000 yard campaign with seven touchdowns. That's the most yardage in his career. 91 speed, great change of direction, carrying, juke, spin. We struggled last episode against the run. So, of course, I'm worried against a really good running back like Kevin Douglas, who's rated the number one in our league. Now, there's more speed to worry about with this offense, but I do think we can handle the coverage today. I think that our secondary matches up pretty well. There's still going to be a chance for this team to get downfield with their speed, but I do think that this is a better matchup for us than the Raiders game. But Herb Smith could be somebody to watch out for in this matchup as tight ends just keep giving us issues. Now, defensively, this team is really good at one thing and really bad at a lot of things, okay? So I've gone through all the numbers on this defense. 30th in run defense. 27th in sacks and they're 21st in points allowed. But what are they good at? Number one in takeaways. Number one in turnover differential. Gotta protect the football today. Super Bowl on the line, everybody. Just our second AFC title game. Are we finally getting to the Super Bowl in this series? It's episode 97. We've waited a very long time. And we do not know who's playing in the Super Bowl yet from the NFC. It's time to take care of the AFC Conference Championship, everybody. Defense up first. Played really well in the game against the Raiders. Outside of the run defense, of course. It all starts with Kevin Douglas. He breaks a tackle and picks up a gain of about nine yards. Braden Jennings out of the shotgun on second down. And for the first time looking to throw on the outside and all by himself. This is a first down up to the 47. And that is Christie on the catch. Throwing once again. Good protection for Jennings and the pass is caught. Inside the Texans 40. First down. Pressing the receivers on second down. Here's Jennings. Pressure getting through. He throws across the middle and gets the first down. Steelers moving the ball well on this first possession. Three for three in the air. Jennings heads to the air on second down and throws it across the middle. This time the pressure forces the errant pass. Third down from the 27. Giving the receivers some room here. It's a four-man rush. Beverly's there. Jennings throws deep and out of bounds. Incomplete. That'll bring on the field goal team a 44-yard attempt on the opening drive. And the Pittsburgh Steelers get on the board. 
What I'm curious about in this game for our offense is do we attack this run defense? We didn't really run the football last episode much. But it all starts. This time we do get a big run. It is Frank Banyard for 15 yards. We ran for what, 25 last episode? And Banyard had like a 12 yarder in there. So pretty much under a yard of carry on everything else. Banyard tripped up this time quickly. It's a short pickup. But perhaps we have our answer. Fowler and Ingram were so good last episode. They're bottom of the screen on third down and eight. Rollsman fires down the sideline. Overthrowing a covered receiver. And the Pittsburgh Steelers will get the stop. Drive number two underway for Pittsburgh. First down and it's Douglas left side running room. Perkins there can't make the tackle but he slows him down. And he's finally stopped at the 44 yard line. Hand off Kevin Douglas spinning out to the right side. Good pickup again. The same issues are showing up. On second and two, the pass is hauled in for a first down. Now let's keep in mind that of course I have already traded Justin Johnson this year to get Alfonso Gresham. This would be a situation just like last episode where we'd like to have Johnson playing defensive tackle. As the pass is caught again for a first down. This is a, a bit more balanced approach than we saw from the Raiders. And it's really working. Sending pressure now, but the ball is out too quick. And it's a gain of eight. Again inside, running room, Douglas. He's at the doorstep of the end zone and stopped there. Goal to go, Steelers. A chance to go up two scores at home in the first quarter. They spread the defense out. And they're going to run it. It's a touchdown for Kevin Douglas and the Steelers with a dominant start go up 10-0. I'd feel a lot better if we got points on this drive. First and 10, running this. Robert Penn, the veteran, running back up to the 30 and stopped there. Inside, and it's a first down run. Frank Banyard, already 24 yards. We have outrushed last performance already. A minute 27 to go in the first quarter off the fake. It is a completion to Dante Hairston and a gain of eight. We bring Amari Jones in motion. Here is the end around with room to run. Breaks through a tackle and he's up to the 43. Rosemond on second and 12 has to throw off his back foot. And it's caught inside the five by George Ingram. Gotta make those tough plays. 41 yards, goal to go. Steelers fans can't believe it. But now the Texans trying to answer back. Banyard gets the handoff and he's going nowhere. They brought in Derek Brown. They have an elite run stopper. He's made a couple big plays. Now we bring Sears in motion against the pressure. Roseman to the end zone. No, he couldn't bring it in. I think there was someone wide open on the left side. They sent way too many for there to not be a wide open receiver somewhere. Third and goal now. Fowler, Fowler missed the chance. Back of the end zone incomplete. So we do get set up, but are only going to come away with a field goal. We got to get off the field here quickly this time. And a deflection by Burgess is how we start things. A play fake now. Jennings has time and a man wide open. First down at the 49. Not really seeing the pass rush early on make an impact. When we scouted their offensive line last episode, and by scouted I mean looked at their overall ratings. Oh no, here's Kevin Douglas again for seven. We saw their strong inside, but average at best tackles. 
So, Ferris and Beverly got to be making some plays today. What is this defense? Passes out anyway, and it's off the hands and almost picked. We need those. Third down and three, not quite in field goal range. Here's the chance. We send four. Good protection. Dumped off. Douglas brought down in the open field. Dante Fry. At the seven, we take over. Trying to avoid the safety. And I can't believe that was overthrown. Robert Penn wide open. Again in the end zone, Roseman fires and connects with Paul Sears. It'll be third down and three. Running it here with Banyard first down. Nice job. I wasn't confident in that one. It's certainly been a different game here for the running backs. Much more success. Here's Banyard into the secondary. Running it again, and Penn is hit forward. He gets five more. Really complimenting the pass game today. I love it. Five and a half to play here in the second quarter. It's Rosamond on second down. Penn's open again, but instead the pass is off the mark. Looked like Ingram was the intended receiver. I think their pass rush has played more of a... An impact today than ours as they sack Roseman on third down. Pittsburgh gets it back at the 31. They want to keep running it with Kevin Douglas, but Jabari Carr makes a key stop. Front four's got to start making plays. Play action. Nobody near Jennings. I gotta point out a block here. I don't know that I've really seen this much in Madden. Oh, by the way, it was like a uh, loss of one. But check this out first off. No one's getting close to Jennings. Here's number 69. He's got no one to block. So what does he do? Just hits Hillhouse to the ground. I want to see Hillhouse come back and sack Jennings right here. Third down and eight. And he gets through. Jennings hit by Hillhouse. This one's deep, and it's intercepted. An arm punt by Braden Jennings, picked off by Traylon Alexander, the rookie corner. Didn't catch one in the regular season, but he's got one here. I can't believe he caught that through David Perkins. Four minutes to play in the first half. Texans have it. Again, run first mentality, but Penn gets stuffed. Pressing at the top, but not here at the bottom. On second and 12 to the outside. Nice catch by Sears to get five. Pretty slow start here for the passing game after 400 last game. Just five for 10 for Roseman. Trying to get that rhythm. He'll throw this one across the middle for Ingram, and he's got it at the 42. Russ Watson's in the game. It's go time. Watson leads the way. What was that? Penalty marker down for worst block attempt of all time by Russ Watson. I don't even care about the holding call. This is not what a fullback lead is supposed to look like. All right? Russ Watson leading the way. All he's got to do is block 97, right? Simple. Instead, you know, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to block Stevenson. That's the worst play of Russ Watson's career right there. He better make up for it now. First down and 18. Banyard is the running back. Oh, no. Accidentally backed out and simmed to play here. It's a penalty on the defense, actually. Second down and 15. This one's caught by Hairston. Where's Cassius Fowler? He was so big for us last episode. Wow, this background's nice. Third down and six. Here's the pressure again given up by Beckton, and the pass goes out of bounds. Pittsburgh's defense really doing a great job in the first half, and they're winning the trench battle on both sides. 
I tried my best to build a team that would consistently win these trench battles, and uh, we aren't as much as I'd like. But that was a great punt by Wes McKinney. Special teams could really be a big factor in this game. Trying to get some room now. It's Douglas hit by Beverly. They're letting the clock run here. They want to go to halftime. In the end zone, Jennings wobbles it outside. Incomplete and nearly picked off by Gresham. And that would have been a walk-in touchdown. Third down and eight. Giving the receivers some room and only sending four. Pass. Intercepted at the 14-yard line. Jermaine Wilbon's biggest play of the season. Texans get a short field and they best not waste it here. They're pressing the receivers on first down and around the edge, no chance. Tackle's got to step up here. Second and 10, Jones isolated there at the top. And Roseman has to look his way. Jones comes back for it. And Roseman wants the penalty. He will not get it. Threw a really nice pass there. And he might have a case in today's league for that being roughing the passer. I've seen that exact play called before. 44 seconds to go. We try to throw it and get six. Touchdown Cassius Fowler. And that should tie the game. Pittsburgh scored the first 10. We scored the next 10. Halftime awaits, 35 seconds on the clock. Braden Jennings, he's gonna be hit. And he delivers it for a gain of seven. If they're passing first here, I imagine they're going to try to get in field goal range. They have the three timeouts. Good pressure here from Beverly. And that is a big play that might take us to half. Oh, I just realized that last play was third down. So we call the timeout to get the ball back. That's the right call. You never know what could happen here, especially with some running room. We have a timeout. Just got to get like 25 yards here. That's caught. Or you get like five or six and stop the clock. That's pretty cool. I still think here you work the middle of the field. Second and five. Pass caught Sears. Up to the 42, trying to fight ahead. I think you got to throw a Hail Mary here. Or you bring out Ryan Ford and hope for a nice breeze. This is a 59-yard try. And Ford's kick comes up short. That's the first half. A great one here in Pittsburgh. Texans start the second half with the football. I formation and a run trying to get outside with the speed of Banyard and he gets met at the 22. Four on the rush. Protection holding up and Roseman's intercepted. Picked off going back the other way. A Pittsburgh pick six. Roseman threw that. I don't think he really saw the defender there. He doesn't really make throws like this very often. Oh, and now the bug happened. I can't go to replay. Threw that off his back foot and did not account for that underneath defender. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, who were number one in takeaways and turnover differential, have a very big one here. 17-10 and out to the 24 goes Paul Baxter. And we'll try to get those points back. Roseman has protected the football for the most part here in the postseason. And this year was his best as far as avoiding turnovers goes. Short gain for Robert Penn. Roseman on second down has to get this away. And there's nobody covering George Ingram first down. On the outside, this is a completion out to Ingram at the 47. 
He might have 100 yards in every playoff game we have. Close to it again today. Here comes Amari Jones on second and one. Robert Penn cuts it up. Good call, first down. I still think we could be challenging these corners a bit more with some 50-50s. Whoa! Batted back intended for Jones. Like, we do not throw enough 50-50 balls to Amari Jones. We gotta be throwing at least one a game. Third and seven. Wide open Amari Jones. First down. Now from the empty set. I like when we go empty. We have some fun plays here. Robert Penn inside the 20. Way too many hits in the backfield. Banyard goes nowhere. And there was a holding call. Trying the draw play here, and it's going to work as Penn gets inside the 20. So you feel good about at least a field goal here. But of course, want that touchdown. Here is Roseman heading to the air. They protect him well. Caught by Ingram, he'll score! Touchdown, Houston! Not ideal to begin the second half with a pick six, but there's a lot of game left. Great drive. We're back to a tie game. Pittsburgh taking over first drive of the half and Douglas started out very strong we've played better since those first couple of possessions after a gain of three heading to the air and the pass is hauled in that's Irv Smith on second down Jennings he doesn't even know he's coming sacked by Beverly Alan Beverly making some big plays today. Now third and 23. He's back again. Jennings downfield. Intercepted. Over the top by Terrell Burgess. Third pick for the defense. And some good field position now. I think he knew Beverly was coming that time. Excellent play over the top. That's how you play safety. Russ Watson in the game. I'm waiting to see a key block or something. Roseman's going to go deep. Singled up. It's Jones inside the 10. Got it. First and goal at the 8. Russ Watson still in the game. And Banyard is the running back. Hand off Banyard inside. He's close and gets in. Touchdown. And the Houston Texans for the first time today have taken the lead. Resiliency has been one of the themes of the season. We're forced to show it again here in this matchup after the pick six. This team is different. Still a long way to go, though. We've definitely stepped up against the run, and Jennings now with three interceptions. You know, sometimes it seems that in this game, things can snowball. When a quarterback's making bad decisions or bad throws, they can come in bunches. Third and three. Jennings completes it. First down. Six protecting. Pressure's there. Didn't get all of it. And intercepted again. Alfonso Gresham. That's our fourth interception of the ball game. Big time performance here for the secondary, and Jermaine Wilbon. Let's add on. Pressing. Bottom of the screen. Throw it to him again. Oh, it's a slant, and it's pretty well covered. Rosemond. Out of trouble. Fires deep. Caught again. George Ingram. Rosemond started slow, but he's got a chance to get all the way back to 400 again. 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. Everything going our way right now. Banyard, wide open space, inside the 15! We're going to the fourth quarter. Texans up 24-17. Great chance to increase the lead. 
Robert Penn checks in on second and goal. Roseman heads to the air. Pressure is picked up. And Roseman finally throws it, and it's caught for the touchdown! George Ingram, second of the ball game. The offense is feeling comfortable now. Roseman's making some big time throws, and the Texans have just created a two score lead. I think he just caught this before exiting the end zone. Well, we're going to see if this Pittsburgh offense can pull off the comeback. They have a lot of great playmakers. And Braden Jennings really needs to make something happen after four interceptions. He's got time. Looks outside. That one's caught. And that's going to be a really big gain. Up to the 46. Here's Jennings on second down. And he's got to throw this one away. The coverage is pretty tight. They can throw it over the middle. We've given up yards there, but outside the numbers, it's been tough. That's knocked down by Jabari Carr, and it's fourth and ten. This is a tricky one. I think you go for it here. But they are not. And it was a good punt. Roseman's in the zone. On first down, letting it develop, and finally completing to George Ingram. What's he at now? Come on, give me the stat update. I'm going to guess 146. You're not even going to tell me? First and 10, Roseman delivers again, and Hairston has four catches today out of nowhere. You show me his stats, but where's Ingram's stat line? Second down and two. Robert Penn fighting ahead for a first. Now it's an aggressive Steelers blitz. That's caught by Ingram! Good luck when the pass is thrown his way. 192. I would have been low. Nine. 192 and two. You're watching the best receiver in the league right now. First and ten. Roseman again downfield. Now it's Jones inside the ten. It's goal to go. Texans want this one to be over, but Roseman is sacked again. 6.22 to go in the game. Roseman dumps it off to George Ingram. That's catch number 10. Roseman very close to 400 yards again. Oh, get him one more yard. Come on. Or how about six right here? Slot right. Jones alone at the top. And Roseman is going to stay on his feet. Keep looking. Throw this one away. That was pretty cool. And now for that all-important three-possession lead, Ryan Ford, 34-17. Pittsburgh takes over, and Jennings gets drilled. 5.37 left to go. Jennings has completed just about half of his passes. But he's also completed four to the other team. Gain of six on second down. Third and four. Braden Jennings right on target. And that is a first down. First and ten. Here's Jennings. Irv Smith makes the grab. And that's up to the 17-yard line. I knew he could be an issue for us. Thankfully, we have a three-possession lead right now. Four minutes left to play. And they'll run it. Kevin Douglas. He may not get to 100 yards today. I think it's rather unlikely. And that's hard to believe after how he started. Roseman's fired up though. He's ready to move on. We've never been this close. Toss outside. Douglas outruns a couple defenders. But is met by Zach Jones. Braden Jennings on third down. 
Throws it across the middle. Tatum had to pick between two receivers there. Was put into a really tough spot. Jennings looks to throw it. It's a screen. Okay. That didn't go as planned, did it? We'll hit the two-minute warning after this snap as Hillhouse gets there. Broken up in the end zone. Yeah, that's a sweet shot right there of Pittsburgh and one of the rivers. I think there are like three. Isn't it like two meet and form a third? So is it really three rivers? I don't know. You tell me. Third and goal. Jennings back in the end zone. That's not going to count anyway. Fourth and goal. Here comes Beverly. Jennings airmails. Or I thought he did. That's a touchdown. What a grab by Norwood. Steelers make it a 10-point game. Onside kicks are a bit more interesting on next gen. Thankfully, this one was not. Picked up by Sears. Banyard up the middle, first down. Just a timeout left for Pittsburgh. I don't think it really matters. Handoff. This is going to end the game. And the Houston Texans will be headed to the Super Bowl at last. I was a little worried when we went down 10-0 early on, but another great performance by the Houston Texans. Steelers gave it their all today, but I think we have a special team here. And there's a reason why they're going further than any team we've built in this series. We're finally going to the Super Bowl. Can't wait to see which NFC North team that we're up against, and you know who I'm hoping it is. But we finally made it. It's taken 97 episodes to get to the Super Bowl. How many hours is that working on this series? At least 200? Maybe more? Another fantastic playoff game. Shadon Roseman throws for 377, three touchdowns, and the pick six. But Braden Jennings intercepted four times in this game. And I can't believe we ended up outrushing them. Really good performance by Banyard and Penn. And we started poorly against Douglas and played great on like his last 10 carries. George Ingram with another massive day, 199 and 2. Jones gets over 100 yards with his big plays. And the interceptions here, we have Alexander, Wilbon, Burgess, and Gresham. That's three players getting interceptions that I don't think we've ever seen get them before. That means we're going to the Super Bowl to take on either the Packers or the Vikings. Six seed Green Bay, seven seed Minnesota. Who's the opponent going to be? We'll be taking on the Green Bay Packers in the Super Bowl. The Vikings could not continue their seven seed run. 21-13 was the final. And that is going to be our matchup. I can't wait. But now, how am I going to know who all made the Pro Bowl? Our players aren't actually going to be participating. This is what we've been trying to do all series. We're finally going to the Super Bowl in Miami to take on the Green Bay Packers. And here is a quick look at their roster. Roy Miles at running back is their top player, followed by Artie Bennett, Chris Townsend, Connor Mabry, George Jones. So there's a significant drop off here in the overall ratings on this team. The quarterback is veteran Dale Duran, 10th year out of Oregon. Pretty solid quarterback, really, really good speed. Scrambling quarterback style, so he should be taking off quite a bit, you would think. He has played his entire career with the Packers. Now, another matchup against a 99 overall running back with really similar ratings. Roy Miles ran for 1,300 yards this season, 5 a carry. At receiver, George Jones, Max Lowry. 91 speed for those two, and then their 3 through 5 receivers have a bit more speed. 
Jones, 88 overall, sixth year out of Michigan, two 1,000 yard seasons. Ooh, you don't want to be missing a tackle against this defense. Interior has a couple good players there, but they're missing an 80 overall rookie center. He's a week away from coming back, and he's not going to play. All right, that's pretty significant. Looks like a pretty talented front seven and a secondary that I think we can definitely make plays against. They don't have the speed. I gotta say, I like the matchup for us here in the Super Bowl. I feel good about this team. It's a special team. Now let's see if we have any development changes going into this game. George Ingram still at Superstar. Where is X Factor? Defensively, I don't think anything has changed here. Wait a minute. Lynn Cox, he had normal development his whole career. Now he's got star after six, seven years. Well, everybody, hope you're excited for the Super Bowl that is coming next time here in a couple days. And we'll see if we can finally accomplish the major goal of the series. Thank you all for watching and supporting the channel. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the action today. And don't forget to subscribe as the Super Bowl is coming up next and you definitely don't want to miss it. Have a great day. I'll see you again soon.